You'll need the fax number for Facebook first. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I have to get the film developed first, though. So uh, <laughs> yeah. let me get my typewriter out. And write oh, a hey, hey guys, it. we're live. They, they've turned us on as we're oh, sitting no. here talking. Wait. So we can't hey. talk about them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Gun Cranks Live. It's Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time and whatever time, wherever it is you're watching. Welcome to our little program here on Facebook and YouTube. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, and with me is, Gun, uh, I almost gave you a promotion to Guns Magazine, American <laughs> Handgunner editor. A demotion? <laughs> what? Wow. Tom yeah, McHale. Demotion. That, yeah. Oh, that's, wait a minute, Guns, that's, is it that it's comic that book? It's that other magazine that we They published. bundle it free yeah. with the Avengers yeah. comic yeah. books or something, yes. or yeah. is that the one? End of... I, 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 got, I deserved all that. And of course, you our did. boss, Roy Huntington, who's here to keep some kind of semblance of on topic. I have no or control something. over anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's great that you're joining us. We're having a lot of fun doing this. And we've been getting lots of cards, letters, and comments. And in spite of that, we're going to continue doing this. So uh, keep, keep those comments coming. Today, we are going to talk about don't buy this ammo. Now, this is a, a 380 Honey Badger, and we're obviously being a little facetious, but we're going to talk about self-defense ammo and maybe some of the lesser varieties of it. We've already talked in, in one gun crank about the 22 long rifle, so let's sweep that out of here. Let's talk about some of these other, other guns and other uh, calibers. This, for example, I'll start out. This is my AMT 380 backup, and it rode on my ankle for three decades, and of course, it fires the the 380 ACP, but so you got a choice now. People are looking to buy guns. Do you want a 380? Do you want a 25 auto? And you know, I tried to get into my uh, ammo locker and I couldn't find a single 25 ACP round. <laughs> have you guys got any stashed away someplace? You know, all the cool guys have 25 ACPs, just oh, okay. so you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, well, well, wait we'll a minute. I, I used to have some around until I kid you not. I saw one bounce off of a Frisbee. Really? Well, they're not really? made for shooting Frisbees. What do you expect? <laughs> Sorry. I guess. No, now, 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 to be serious about this, I would not want to be shot by one ever because that would be dangerous and fatal and all those things. But I guess it was just weird physics, like the angle of the Frisbee, the flexible kind of material, the distance, and it literally, <laughs> the bullet bounced off the Frisbee, didn't, didn't penetrate it. So you realize that now. Me. There will be somebody on YouTube testing Frisbees for bullet don't resistance. Don't do that. Yeah. I, please don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> well, you know, that's not my first choice as the 380, but like I said, I carried one for a long, long time. Roy, what's your thoughts on the 380? You know, this is really interesting because I know uh, until recently, everyone said, if you carry a 380, we're all going to die. The world's going to end. And But there's there's a couple of idiosyncrasies. We shooters tend to be opinionated and don't listen to people. And But if you could just have an open mind for a minute, the 380 ammunition and the guns, the technology has changed so much in the past few years. Mm -hmm. that the ammunition now is extremely effective. I mean, uh, to me, if you have an 80, 90, 100 grain bullet, a nine millimeter caliber that penetrates 12 inches in gelatin who cares if it comes from a 380 or a nine millimeter it's the same same you know and yeah. the other thing that that shooters do especially people who are new to concealed carry is they say well i'm going to carry a five inch all steel 1911 because we all know it's the 45 versus nine millimeter and all that other kind of stuff well that works for about three days because then everybody gets tired of hoisting their britches back up, you know, and, and it's heavy. And then what do they do is that they go and they don't have their gun with them, you know? And so Brent, like you said, you know, you always had that gun on your ankle. I do the same thing. I've got a Ruger LCP two, which I've said many times before, but it's always in my pocket loaded with honey badgers as a matter of fact. And uh, so you don't violate that have a gun rule. And I think, you know, we facetiously said, you know, if, if you don't want to have an accurate, effective, you know, gun, don't buy a 380. But the reality of it is, is in, with today's market, is that I think you really need to take a hard look at it. Tom, what do you think? I think you hit the nail on the head with, with modern ammo. And being yeah. a gun geek, crank geek, mainly emphasis on geek, <laughs> um, I've tried to, done a bunch of gel stuff with 380s. Like, uh, I'm just looking at some old notes here. And I use the six hour V crown 380, which is a really good 380 load. It's an, and it's expanding traditional hollow point design. And I, I shot it out of an LCP 
and I also did a, a Walther PPKS, you know, a little bit longer barrel, so a little more velocity. And both of those through the four layer FBI fabric stuff and into uh, ballistic gelatin, both of those were great. The um, LCP averaged 14 inches deep, full expansion, you know, to about 0 0.4, 0 0.45 inches in that range, depending on the bullet. And the PPKS went about an inch further, went about 15 average, you know, through the, the heavy fabric and into the gels. So it was like, it's a little yeah, bit lighter bullet than that? a nine millimeter, but as you said, it's the same diameter and it's going, it's doing what it's supposed to do. I mean, a wound channel is a wound channel is a wound channel, you know, and, yeah. and there's something else I think we need to talk about is a lot of people complain about how snappy the little 380 recoil is. And I am i don't know, it's just really never seemed to be an issue to me. And I, the only thing I can say is like, man up, would you? I mean, it, it's just <laughs> hold. I, I think that te people tend to do the, oh, it's a cute little gun and they just kind of barely hold on to it. I mean, if anything, like Brent shooting your little OMC 380 backup, you, you have to hold on to it really tight. And if yeah, you grip yeah. them so tight that your knuckles turn white, and then yeah. when you shoot the gun, you're not even going to notice it. Do you, guys, you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think that we started touching on a point that I, I just thought of, but it's really pretty important is with all the new shooters now, you'll walk into a store and somebody will say, well, little lady, you need a little thing like that. And as we've talked about, like with revolvers, that's not necessarily the best first gun for a shooter. And 380s do tend to be a little snappier because they're so small. So uh, try to be an informed consumer, especially if you're a woman, because, you know, I'll, I think we can all tell stories of, you know, you need this pink J frame or, you know, this little 380 because you can't handle a gun. Well, I often tell the story. I had a student who was one of the most diminutive, diminutive women I've ever seen, and she was having trouble with her nine millimeter, and we switched her over to a 45, and she was the gunfighter from hell. Uh, she... <laughs> <laughs> she managed the recoil just fine. The gun was sized to her properly. So it's not about your physical size. It's about manipulating the firearm properly. So uh, it just kind of makes me crazy sometimes that, well, uh, I have a good friend who uh, asked me my advice and then went to his local gun store and came home with a 25 ACP. And yeah. he's finding there's a lot of shortcomings there, the least of which is the terminal ballistics. It's the fact the gun's a piece of crap. It's hard to shoot. It's hard to handle. But obviously, they had a special on, and uh, he walked out of that gun shop. And I'm embarrassed to say, because he's a good friend of mine, but he just didn't listen to me. So bottom line is we're talking kind of these smaller calibers, 380s, 25s, 32s. Don't fall for it. Well, it's so much smaller, anybody can shoot it. That's not necessarily the case. You know, I would look upon them like a pocket tool is that I carry pocket tools all the time out here. And invariably, when I go to use my pocket tool, you know, there I struggle through, I get the job done, but I do wish that I had a real screwdriver or a real knife mm -hmm. or a real hacksaw or a real pair of pliers. But the, the deal is, is though, it's, it's what you've got at hand. And I mm -hmm. think if you learn the shortcomings, as you say, learn the idiosyncrasies, learn how to manipulate it that it could be a friend, you know, in a yeah. certain situation. I wouldn't take on AK armed terrorist thugs, you know, taking over my neighborhood. But I mean, I would if that was all I had at hand. But, you know, chances are pretty rare that we're going to have that. Although with today's pandemonium, who knows? Uh, and, and indeed, I think that's why when I go into town, I also carry a real gun, you know, like a nine yeah. millimeter Hellcat or something. But I, I, we just, we have to pry open these shooters' closed minds because if you say 380 or 32 or 22, they just, mm -hmm. they just like shut you down, you know. And it's like, well, wait, let's look at the facts. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, the, we did a really good stopping power article a few years ago. We'll put a link into that. Uh, and a, a young officer named uh, Greg Elf, Elfritz, I Elfritz. think is his name. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it took actual real data, unlike what a lot of the guys who say they had actual real data. He he tracked it personally from shootings on the different agencies that he worked with. And basically what he found out, and which was not a surprise to me and probably not to you guys, is that virtually any caliber seemed to be able to do the job if you got it on target correctly and you followed up, you know, with a couple of shots. And 380s, 9 millimeters, 40s, 45s, they all pretty much had exactly the same stopping power. 
you know, yeah, statistically and, they did. Yeah, they yeah. did. He and, looked at one shot stops, number of shots to end the fight, you know, all these different metrics and they were just neck and neck, you know, like across the board almost. Yeah. I think he did say the 25s and 22s were, you know, like marginally not as reliable, but I, I don't recall the exact data, but I'll tell you, based on my experience on a police department, I, I went to a lot of autopsies because I was kind of real involved with the forensic stuff just because my friends were in the lab and I used to poke my eyes in there all the time and, yeah. and make a nuisance of myself. And so I saw a lot of bullet wounds and, and, and talked to a lot of doctors at autopsies and they all said the same thing. They all said, I can't tell you based on the wound if this was a nine millimeter or 38 or a 32 or, you know, he said, I can tell you if it was a shotgun blast up close, <laughs> you know, right. He said, and some rifle wounds, I can tell if it was, especially if it was close, he said, but the handgun stuff. And I, and I remember asking him many times, which round seems to kill people the most. And he said, around here, it's just like 25s, 32s, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, at the time we had a real gang problem. They were shooting each other all the time. They all had these little cheap, you know, guns like that. And there was a lot of dead bodies. And so I think mostly we just need, as we, we try to do in our magazines, we need people to just keep an open mind, you know? And that's, well, I think that's, there's a, you know what, something to consider is separate the discussion of caliber and gun. So when you say 380, what does that really mean? And, and you know, I think you were talking about an LCP, great little gun, super handy, but it's, it's a fraction of the weight of this. They both fire 380 ACP. And being the geek I am, I, you know, I do the recoil math and it's, it works out to double. The recoil you feel in your hand shooting the exact same bullet is twice as much with the LCP as with this because it's heavier and it's made of steel, right? So what trade-off do you want or do you care about? You know, if you want portability and are willing to accept a little more recoil, great. Go with something small and light, you know? Yep. Well, you know, as we all yeah, age. Get a bigger, heavier well, gun. It can still yeah. shoot 380 especially for a home defense gun that you're not carrying around. You know, right. that brings us back to that Smith & Wesson uh, M&P Easy 380, uh, mm -hmm. which I think we've all had experience with. And, and I remember when it first came out and we went back to the factory and I thought, well, this is stupid. And then once I shot it and I realized how effective it was, it was accurate, it was easy to manipulate because, you know, they're a little bigger. They're kind of medium-sized-ish. And... Uh, the slide has those little finger groovy things at the back. So like little wings, you can manipulate it easily. And then I thought, boy, you combine a platform like that, like your Walther with, with modern 380 ammunition and suddenly you have an effective tool. And it's, but yet I still see people say, oh no, it's a 380. I could, I'd never buy one. Yeah. Well, you know, Tom hit on the phrase I find myself saying more and more and more as I gain more experience in life everything is a trade-off everything is a trade-off you know Wait a minute. are you admitting i said something sensible you, you didn't come up with it you're just repeating oh. it <laughs> partial credit i think the dalai like, lama said it i think that <laughs> could be. Yeah. but but it's absolutely true you know speed versus accuracy size and everything is a trade-off so you can go small you're giving away some things but you're gaining some things so you know i think when tom said i i will give you credit for this tom when you said shooters are binary, that was the first time I, I'd ever really heard what we've all experienced our entire shooting career and somebody put it into words. And that's absolutely true. And we've said it every gun cranks, I think in the last couple of weeks, but we tend to be binary. It's, this is the greatest ever. This is the worst ever. And if you yeah. talk to somebody, that has got a little more experience and a semi-open mind. Everything fails at some point. Everything works great at some point but <laughs> you just got to keep an open mind and, and be able to embrace all of that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I hear it sometimes with the, we're, I live in Missouri. It's all about deer hunting here. And so it's the 243, 308, 30 out six argument back and forth you hear in the local gun stores. And I, I mean, it almost goes to fist fighting sometimes. And, yeah. and even though you try to tell people, it's like, boys, I mean, a 150 grain <laughs> bullet at 2,600 feet per second from a 30 caliber rifle doesn't care if it's a 30 out six or a 308, you know. <laughs> yep. And but they just go, "Well, no, you know, those 30 out sixes they hit harder." You know, it's like, "Well, what knock does down that power." Mean? Yeah, knockdown knock power. Oh my gosh, that's a that. whole episode right there. Yeah. Knockdown. Yeah, power. we should talk go. about knock, but knockdown <laughs> power someday. So, uh, but I'm mean, hopefully we can crack the nut a little bit here though with just that keep an open mind because. Um, as you say, with the recoil issue, with that uh, Smith & Wesson Easy 380, 
uh, it's become my favorite teaching gun now. And that mm -hmm. I just, you know, the, somebody wants to learn to shoot a semi-auto, the, I just, there we go. That's what we use. It's easy to manipulate. It's good sights, good trigger, single stack. The magazine's easy to load. And like you say, it's gun versus ammo platform. So here we have an excellent platform. And then if you just now look at the ammunition separately and think, mm -hmm. well, we have the good technology. We have good quality ammunition. We have proven performance. Your gel tests prove it yet again. And, uh, it's like, well, why not just join the two together then? And you've got this terrific right. platform. I remember when we ran that as a cover feature in Handgunner a year or so ago, two years ago, the, a lot of people went out and bought the gun and we heard about them. You know, they wrote to us saying, you know, boy, you were right, man. You know, my, you know, elderly wife and, you know, we went out and bought one of those guns and she shot it and she loves it. And I'm going to have to buy another one for me. So maybe there's a lesson there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, and, and, something you touched on is the technology we've all of us have said we're living in the golden age of shooting we really are uh even the inexpensive guns are so much better than they used to be but i will say overall when we're talking these smaller perhaps less expensive guns that's one of the downsides one of the trade-offs maybe the sights are worse um the trigger on this thing is an abomination quite frankly so that was a trade-off you know i can hide this in my hand but the trigger's awful. Um, so that, you know, that's the we kind of stuff. We need to compare triggers one day. Yeah. The, the Tomcat versus that. <laughs> yeah. I had one of those at some point, and I, I think I had to buy Little Timmy's Insulin or something, and I got rid of it. But, you know, again, it's those trade-offs that, you know, it may be more concealable uh, and all that, but you, there's certain uh, uh, trade-offs that have to be made. I keep using that word, but, uh, you know, you, you, you don't get to pick from column A, B, and C. You can only pick from column A or column C, depending on the gun. You know, there's something else about, and it's a lot like J-frame, small frame revolvers, as people often say, oh, they're no good. They're not accurate. And I hear that about the small 380, 32 style autos too. I'm sure I know you guys do too. Yeah. And my little LCP2 380, it was interesting because I, I actually took the time to zero it with this honey badger at 15 yards. I, yeah. I put a little TIG weld on the front sight and, and filed it so the elevation was correct. And then I opened <laughs> ah. up the, yeah. And then I opened you are up such the rear a geek. sight. I know. I know I'm a, I'm a geek. I admit it, you know, but. <laughs> But because I was curious more than anything and because it's it's actually really accurate. And so oh, yeah. I, I opened up the rear sight on the side. I needed to move it horizontally because you can't drift adjust the rear sight. And so at 15 yards, I mean, you, you can actually keep this thing on a tiny saucer easily. You yeah. know? And that's where people say, oh, no, they're not accurate. It's like, well, no, you're the shooter. The platform maybe isn't the one that's accurate. And so pay attention to your trigger, pay attention to the sight picture and all that kind of stuff. And the guns will do it. I mean, I, I almost can't think of a gun that we've tested in the last 10 years that probably couldn't uh, mechanically shoot better than most shooters can. Right. Yep. You know? Yep. Well, we'll all start the contentious debate now. So Tom, you're, you're uh, more of the, uh, the engineering type on this kind of stuff. I know you really like pounds and figures and charts and all that. So which bullets do you carry if you're going to carry your Tomcat or uh, something else? Well, okay. So, well, let's, since we're talking about 380, let's stick with that because you actually brought up a good discussion point when you held it's funny, we didn't even plan this. We both yeah. grabbed the same cartridge to hold up a Honey Badger, Black Hills Honey Badger. Yeah. I really, really like this for 380, um, especially because it's it's a solid projectile. It's not built to expand. It uses this kind of fluted thing for, for displacement. Um, that's designed. So since a 380 is kind of on the cusp of that penetration expansion seesaw, this kind of negates that whole issue. You're definitely going to get penetration and you're going to get disruption, right? So yep. I've, uh, I've kind of switched to this guy for uh, all 380s that I use. Well, that's funny. When I took my magazine out prior to recording this, that's what was in there. So yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, 
I just ditto, you know, <laughs> it's like what they said. Uh, We're supposed and, to and argue, it, Roy. We're supposed to I argue. I know, it, but it, I don't want to disparage other <laughs> ammunition because I also, I, I actually yeah. recently shot some some new SIG 380 ammunition, the V-Crown ammunition. I shot mm -hmm. Hornady. I shot a Double Tap. I mean, it all ran fine, seriously. Yeah. And so I think you buy the brand that you really like. I think we have a lot of experience shooting a lot of guns with a lot of ammo and to get that extra half a percent, you know, of reliability and stuff like that, we tend to grab at every straw that we can. And, and I think the, you know, some hollow points in some guns can be unreliable. We all know that we're all adults. Mm -hmm. let, let's admit that. And Full metal jacket may be more reliable feeding, but we all know it's maybe not the best for shooting, you know, into gelatin or people or whatever. And so what's the closest thing that we can have? And I found the honey badger shape of the bullet feeds and acts like full metal jacketed ammunition. But as Tom said, the flutes there, uh, I think it's, it's based on Lehigh defense technology from years ago, but it was redesigned by Jeff Hoffman at Black Hills to to meet his specifications. Interestingly enough, you may not know this, but the flutes on each of the different calibers are actually different. The, the yeah. engineering for each one is very caliber specific to get it to perform the way they wanted it to. And so I think if you're, you know, at least for me, if I'm looking for that last fractional percentage point is why I've elected for honey badger. So but not, but as we said, not to disparage the competition. Yeah. And, and I think that touches on kind of the next point is whatever you're going to carry fine, but make sure you can hit what you're aiming at. And so that goes back to, you need to put a lot of rounds through your gun to where you can perform on demand. And that's the thing I always jump up on my soapbox. Cause you know, uh, a, a 458 Winchester, if you hit them in the toe, it's not going to make that big a difference. Whereas you hit them in the heart with a 25, that's going to make a huge difference. So it's about hitting where you aim and being able to do it under stress. And the only way you're going to do that is how do we get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> You know, everybody has this vision that they hear the bump in the night and they wake up and they get their gun and there's enough light that they can see. And the bad guy is waiting patiently at the end of their hallway, holding a Standing. knife like this, glaring at him, saying that I'm going to kill you. And then they have a lot of time and their 911 is on the phone listening to it. And, he, and they say, get out of my house because you're a threat to my family or I will shoot you. And then the guy says, no, I'm not going to leave, right? And so then there's this perfect <laughs> one-shot stop, and then the police come, and everybody has a group hug. And the, I think we all know that it just, that's so rare as to almost be virtually never, you know? And the reality of it is that it's, it's fast and dark, and you can't see, and it's confusing, and your gun, your ammunition doesn't work the way you think it is, and it may take multiple shots. And so... That's why the actual shooting of the gun part is the is part B. And I think you guys will both agree with that, is that the manipulation and the thinking beforehand is what's so important. And uh, Tiger McKee, who writes the tactics and training column for American Handgunner, I think he's one of the most savvy of the of the trainers around because he, he actually mostly talks about how to avoid conflict and how mm -hmm. to get out of a situation and taking every step you can to be prepared and prepare yourself emotionally and mentally and uh, you know, learn how to manipulate your gun and be, be able to quickly think on your feet to change plans and always be ready to run. You yep. know, and, yeah. and I think too much of YouTube and too much of what we read in magazines sometimes tends to focus on the, what was the grimace look you oh. guys, uh, mission specific grimace your mission specific <laughs> grimace yes the over photoshopped ar-15 <laughs> tactical guy standing in there you know it's like i got yeah. it and there's wars and you know and there we have good yeah. guys that fight those wars but for sam and Susie homemaker that's kind of not yeah. what it is you know well while we're on that topic, I'm going to let out a little kind of insider fmg american handgunner guns magazine a little bit of secret in our magazine, you will generally not see as many of those kind of photos because we tell our writers, I don't want to see you 
trying to look like the hero. Back in the day, we were all 250 pounds of chiseled muscle, but that day is long gone. So let's speak for yourself. Well, I know Tom, but (laughs) (laughs) I, I liken it to, uh, I I saw a picture that somebody sent and I told them I'm not going to run that because he didn't look like he was a steely eyed dealer of death. He looked like he was either constipated or being held hostage. (laughs) So, so (laughs) on the way to the donut shop. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We're not perfect in that regard, but you're not going to see a lot of Uh, kind of stuff in our magazines. That's a tactical distraction technique. Uh, the, eyebrow? the bad guy kind of stops for a second like what the heck tdt <laughs> you a tactical moment. distraction technique we've just yeah. now see we've created another one now we'll see that on on the cover of some magazine exactly, exactly. my Let's fear build too your own is tactical distraction technique <laughs> if if you look so good what if you're you know advancing on a thread or whatever and there's a mirror you might stop and go damn, I look fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I think it's good. We have fun with this kind of stuff because we're making fun of ourselves. We're making fun of our industry. Exactly. I mean, you go to the shot show, all you see are these eight foot tall, you know, placards with steely eyed tactical grimace looking people on them. And, uh, and it's, I don't know, it's a bit embarrassing to me, I think, because it, I'm not sure it always presents the best image, you know, of what we do yeah. and, and, and how we feel about our friends and family and stuff. Well, you know, I do a lot of hunting and I, I'm more so on the hunting side than the other two guys. And it just slaughters me. I go to the archery tackle association show. It's kind of like the shot show for archery. And I remember, I can't remember where it was, but they had a giant banner and it was all their uh, TV guys. And it looked like they had just landed uh, at, at Anzio or something. I didn't yeah. realize that ducks were carrying machine guns now and <laughs> equipped with flak jackets. And, you know, we certainly see that on the gun side, but it's even kind of infested the archery world and the hunting thing. The, you know, it's, it's, it used to be a contemplative pastime, and it's turned into just this militant thing. So we, uh, we, we try to puncture some of that when we can because, again, we're no longer, even Tom, no longer 250 pounds of chiseled muscle and with our mission specific grimace. We may be 250 pounds <laughs> of mush. Let's ground it though. Cause we segued there a little bit. And I think the, I think what we all agreed to on this particular episode was that we, we wanted people to keep an open mind and to, if you're a little leery of, of a high capacity nine millimeter, you know, or as they say, standard capacity, nine millimeter, and you're afraid if you don't buy a 45 that, you know, your family's going to die because you failed them is just keep that open mind. And then as you read mm. our magazines and you, and you go online and do all your due diligence, do it everywhere. And yeah. you'll, you'll come across some idiots. You'll come across some people who seem to know what they're talking about, learn to vet it, learn to weigh it. And then uh, the best thing to do is go to some range and rent some guns and then try them out. I mean, just like you would try out any other tool that you want, you know, before you spend your money on it. But, but don't discount like a 380 or a small gun uh, just because of rumors and, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. Is exactly. Get the facts first. Now, Tom, you, you had a game show or something you were saying. Well, you know, we were, we were chit-chatting before we got started and, um, I, I kind of chuckle at how we all, we, and I'm going to say we, because I'm going to count myself in that group, um, get all worked up about foot pounds and kinetic energy and, and, and all of these things, right? You know, if, if you don't have three more pounds of foot pounds of kinetic energy, you're going to die and Millie Vanilli is going to lip sync at your funeral. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, in my it's high risk thing. So I thought, you know, just to put this in perspective, Let's do a little. Let's do a little quiz for you and Roy. Okay. Okay. Oh, geez. So, I didn't know about this. You guys are conspiring. No, you didn't. Well, All it right. would. You know, it wouldn't be a pop quiz if you got to study for it. Come on. Yeah, but okay, Roy, you have the advantage of knowledge, so I'm <laughs> well, totally winging this. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So let let's do this. Let's say. Um, <laughs> got my correct notes here. So let's say hypothetically, you guys, you, you had to have watched some baseball in your life, right? Nolan Ryan, awesome pitcher, right? Super fastballer, right? So let's suppose Nolan Ryan is throwing a fastball, right? It's like a projectile 
and he's generating X number of foot pounds, just like ammo with his fastball, screaming fastball, right? So which has more energy, a Nolan Ryan fastball or 32 ACP? Roy. 32 ACP. Okay. Brent? I'll say the fastball. Wow. Split vote. But sorry, Roy wins, but barely. So Nolan Ryan cranks up 128.2 foot pounds while a 32 ACP, you know, 73 grain bullet at 10, 10 feet per second is 165.4. So if you're facing a home invasion in the middle of the night, do not bring Nolan Ryan along to save the day. Okay. It's a good 32. That's the lesson. And you, but you know what? The only difference between the two, the only difference between those two is the 32 penetrates. Yeah. And the, and the ball doesn't. Which yeah. there is the whole point of bullets, yeah. right? They don't yeah. knock things over. They make holes. You know? They make holes. Yeah. But okay. they, they stop. <laughs> what? what? Go ahead. Um, we don't need to get off on that. <laughs> no. Is that, did we pass? Are we done with the game show quiz? Well, one of you passed. Yeah. So. Okay. The other one, guy lost. One of you, the, the host, <laughs> didn't quite pass, but but it was a good Actually, effort. This, you know, this is kind close. of fun, though. We, we should do this again, uh, you know, like maybe end it with each one of us having to pick a, a little like, trivia. Let's do the okay. little game show trivia and stump the, <laughs> stump the other two guys. That's a great I, idea. I say that Tom is our game show host, and he has to put on the the – bow tie which you wear a lot but we need to come up with a virtual background for you of like you know all the glitter and the lights and yeah yeah Yeah. they vent white in the back i wonder if i can still borrow the jeopardy one you know (laughs) i'll take take kinetic energy for 400 please alex (laughs) (laughs) i like that kinetic energy for 400 yeah Well, Uh, before we go, speaking of backgrounds, Roy, you have a new background that either you threw some paint against the wall or I'm having some kind of optic nerve disturbance. What's up with that? You know, Scout the Wonder Dog threw up on the carpet the other day and (laughs) I figured, you know what, that looks like a pretty good backdrop. So I just picked it up and put it behind me. So that's funny. Now I gave up. I I got tired of complaints about people saying, I'm really tired of seeing your office behind (laughs) there. Those other guys got really cool backgrounds. And so. There you go. There you go. Thank nice. you, Amazon Prime. You know. <laughs> well, I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian, so that's why I've got a brick wall behind me. And yeah, or someday. a firing squad. Huh? Is it? Well, we're well, we're talking about ammo, so I have. I, I don't do this virtual stuff. I got real background behind me. Very expensive virtual, background. I'm talking about. His here. virtual background looked so real. You know, he no, was. Know. Able, it looked like he picked up a box of ammo and held it up. That's yeah, that's crazy, tech, man. You what you have a full production with? crew in your house, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if folks knew this is the most low budget operation, oh. we, <laughs> we but hey, we're, someday we should do like a 360. That would be know, fun. Make sure everyone has clothes on in the corner or whatever, you know, but have a 360 and then they'll see just how messy our offices really are. Except for say. Mr. McHale. Cause yeah. any, I, could, I just got to interject this though. Anyone whose ammunition shelf is that organized, that is the sign of a sick mind, or oh, he yeah. has nothing else to do. I absolutely. Just, that well, is but absolutely. Before I spend three, we went four on, hours a day just resorting ammo. So, I believe it. Before yeah. we went on, you were saying, though, for recreation, sometimes you plot out foot pound curves and all this. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Well, okay. there's that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, Have we offended no. enough people tonight? <laughs> uh, Probably. (laughs) Everybody's offended. You know, except I want to see a headline in a major publication of a backlash against us because that's how you've made it. If you're big enough, there's a quote unquote backlash, you know, we're, we're, we're it. So in all seriousness, we are getting a lot of uh, comments and uh, suggestions and we've even had people volunteering to be on the show. So we were talking about that too. That, that may happen one of these days, but please let us know what you want to hear us talk about. We're probably going to do some viewer letters maybe next week. We don't know that for sure, but that might be fun. We, we love and hate our reader letters. Most of them are a lot of fun and they bring up a lot of cool stuff. We never thought of a couple of them. Um, 
you know, <laughs> dear ignorant SOB. Yeah, those, <laughs> those don't necessarily make your day, but the ratio. It's the, I read one. with alarm ones, you know, I read with alarm. <laughs> exactly. Or, or the I, two words, you suck. You suck, okay. man. Short well, and thanks. to the point. You got to admire yeah. that. Yeah. The yeah, kinetic thanks, energy of that statement is phenomenal. Yeah. It's off the charts. Mom, you could have picked up the phone and called me, you know, so, <laughs> but anyway, please, please let us know what you think. And important, more importantly, share this with your friends because we are doing this as we are employed. So we need to get a massive audience and uh, high paying uh, advertisers. And then, like I said, at some point we'll get a jet and then we'll do like the run cranks world tour and all that and uh, maybe i can afford the moist cat food at that point but no let us let us know what you think what you what you say uh reach tom and roy at editor at americanhandgunner.com and myself at editor at gunsmagazine.com and we'll be uh ever so grateful for your guidance and like i said please share with all your friends on social media that uh hey come check out these knuckleheads every wednesday 8 p.m eastern standard time facebook youtube uh, both facebook pages and youtube and then of course you can always watch us later so gentlemen did i cover everything you did and we'll do our best to keep being as offensive as possible exactly we did get a complaint on roy but i'm not going to revisit that but <laughs> hey he's our boss so he can do that kind of stuff i i didn't add though our our annual or our weekly plea if you like what we're doing check out all our stuff but please subscribe to our magazines i am truly getting to the point that uh, one of these days they're just they are just going to shut off firearms material on the internet it's going to happen the way the world is going so one way they can't shut off good firearms journalism is if you subscribe to our magazines and they'll deliver it right to your door so check out americanhandgunner.com and gunsmagazine.com so on behalf of Tom McHale and Roy Huntington, I hope you've had some fun here tonight. I know we have. And uh, what, what other job in the world can you reach out to a lot of your friends and not be wearing any pants? So on behalf of my fellow gun cranks, I'm Guns I Magazine. I told you I lost all control. Speaking here. of throwing up on the carpet. Uh, the, Bye, right, Mom. <laughs> yeah. you, you can shut us off now. We're, we're done. Stick a fork in us. Good night, everybody. Hope you had a good night. Bye.